Okay, friends, I think we are ready to begin. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to our second meeting in our series on art and politics, which is hosted by the Institute for Comparative Literature and Society under the aegis of the Ambedkar Initiative and our series this year on understanding systemic racism. I'd like to uh, start with a brief announcement, encouraging our guests to visit our website to check out uh, a series of brief podcasts uh, prepared by a student collective across last summer and fall, which tracked various links between the city that is New York, the university that is Columbia, American intellectual culture of the interwar, and the worlds of B.R. Ambedkar. I'd also like to st uh, start by thanking our co-sponsors for today, the Barnard Provost's Office, the Deans of Humanities and Social Science, as well as the Columbia EVP's office, institutes such as CSER, the CGT, ERAS, IRCPL, and the South Asia Institute, as well as the Department of MISAS, the Columbia University Libraries, and the Columbia University Press. Our conversations occur in the context of a broad and comparative reckoning with racism and its violent histories across the world, and it happens in the midst of a great transformation of public and political life. As we celebrate Black History Month, we also take inspiration from the anti-caste legacy of B.R. Ambedkar and reflect on his continued relevance to discussions about social justice, affirmative action, and democratic thinking in a global frame. Our focus this semester is on the radical capacity of words, images, and sound to reorder the perceptual field and to challenge and indict life worlds of caste. Writing and literature has tended to be our predominant focus, but there has been renewed interest and a great deal of work in sound and performance, as well as in the so-called plastic arts. We're really thrilled today to be hosting a session titled Ambedkarite Aesthetics and Contemporary Art Practice. As usual, we want to avoid Zoom fatigue. We have about an hour and a half with each other, and we want to leave room for questions uh, and engagement with you, the audience. So each of our speakers today will take no more than 20 to 25 minutes to present some work. And then I'll start gathering questions from chat and pose it to both Prabhakar Kamble and YS uh, Alone. Since we're gonna be sharing screens and asking you to see rather than merely hear today, it's possible that we might experience some delays as we shift between screens and platforms. There is always the possibility of technology failure, so please be patient as we work to do this. Uh, I want to uh, start by introducing very briefly the renowned artist Prabhakar Kamble, who will present work first. Prabhakar Kamble lives and works in Mumbai, well known for his curatorial uh, work, for his extensive, uh, the extensive exhibitions of his work that have happened both in India and internationally. I asked Prabhakar if he could acquaint us with some of his recent work and what this says about his ongoing art practice. So he'll speak with us about a kinetic installation, a performance and a sculpture that he's uh, been engaged in working through recently, and then speak a little bit about his curatorial projects. Professor Wyas Alone, like Prabhakar Kamble, is well known to all of you. He will speak on the theme of alternative or difference, reading Ambedkarite and Ambedkarian aesthetics in contemporary art practice. He teaches at JNU uh, in Delhi in the Department of Art and Aesthetics, and he's opened up questions of art practice as this links to institutional access and exclusion. He'll speak about the politics of curating, exhibiting, and collecting art, and the question of aesthetic judgment itself. Uh, I'd like to welcome you both, uh, Prabhakar and Vyas Alone, to our, uh, to our uh, uh, conversation today. Uh, we're very, very thrilled to have you with us. And uh, we'll start with Prabhakar Kamble. Thank you again, everybody, for being with us and looking forward to our conversation. Hi. Thank you. Uh, Jaibim friends, firstly, uh, I apologize at the beginning. I have a cold, 
so if there is a change in my voice in between the talk or <laughs> if i sneeze please bear with me uh yeah <clears throat> i'm prabhakar kamble as anupama uh, introduced me as an artist curator and cultural activist i live and work in mumbai but uh, with 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 a practice that is pan india through my role as a curator and uh, a uh, member of activist uh, of ambit right movement before going uh, further as we are having discussions on ambit right aesthetics and uh, and uh, art practices uh, in the ambit right uh, ambit lecture series i would like to greet dr ambedkar who liberated us and uh, taught us that the cultivation of mind should be the ultimate aim of human existence i would like to thank the institute uh, for comparative literature and the society at columbia uh, university dr anupama rao and professor vais alone for inviting me uh, to this online presentation to talk on the topic of ambedkarite aesthetic and uh, contemporary art practice today uh, worldwide the ambedkarite intellectuals have been creating revolutions with their uh, thoughts and their interlinkages with the with the global fight against uh, human degradation much like ambedkar did a uh, century or or so ago at columbia <clears throat> uh, through the ambedkarite ideology we accept the idea that liberates human beings with uh, with ethical intervention in in the man made exploitary system which is responsible for uh, human slavery suffering and uh, exploitation and i think art is a non violent tool to intervene in such systems with a great alternative uh, which endorses the idea of freedom justice and uh, equality as well uh <clears throat> let's begin with my artworks uh i i have to share my screen screen to uh, show my artworks to you i hope uh, the image i'm showing on the screen is visible to all Uh, i would like to start with this work when a moment backgrounds one's existential identity art becomes a vehicle of social change i come to being an artist uh, 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 on the path of an aspirational journey uh, my journey in the art world began with uh, with the academic practice of art that was taught in the school of art where a mechanism of brahmanical ideas of education works but fortunately i grew up with my parents engagement in the in the dalit movement so i am grateful to got introduced to this ambedkarite ideology that encourages me to uh, to 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 break the brahmanical idea uh, of looking towards human existence through my uh, art practice my practice involves curatorial projects in equal measure as does my personal art, art practice it is uh, informed by kinetic installations drawings paintings and performances i respond and represent caste based oppression of dalit community immediate social realities as well as personal and collective histories through ambedkarite consciousness that uh, emerges from dalit consciousness the title of that work is uh, the the public portrait of dr ambedkar combining my abilities as a portrait painter to adorn a public mural project across the state of maharashtra i painted several large portraits uh, of uh, dr ambedkar to endorse uh, social movements uh, who fight for social justice uh, where various communities local artists come and make works uh, that celebrate an alternate uh, visual culture that uh, celebrates dr ambedkar his success in, in in defeating the burden of caste born into discrimination but lives today emancipating uh, continuously 1.3 billion people i would like to uh, move uh, to next work uh, 
which is a kinetic installation. The title of that work is Disfiguration of Images. I hope the image is visible on the screen. Yeah. Uh, amidst the identity of culture lies power, the, the function and, the, and and axis of progress. This uh, play of power embodies uh, public history, uh, the, the visible and invisible. And an erasure as an attempt to uh, deconstruct its origin, its foundational structure becomes a new construct. Uh, forms of uh, erasures situate reforms as forms of assertion. I have to play a video of that kinetic installation, then uh, you will get an idea about the work, how it works. Yeah. Yeah, there is a video also on the screen. Uh, the uh, ups, uh, obscured episode of the vandalization of Dr. Rambedkar's uh, statue uh, occurred in Unao, Uttar Pradesh on April 7th, 2018. A day later, vandalized statue painted in saffron was replaced by a new one. The kinetic installation, disfiguration of image, enacts uh, this, this moment of erasure. The mechanical moment uh, of repainting uh, the sculpture of Ambedkar is attempted uh, repeatedly to emphasize uh, on the moment of juxtaposing uh, color. Ideologies uh, uh, perpetuate uh, uh, through societies. They are often used to organize hierarchy and uh, uh, are centralized through uh, social institutions as, as, such as media, education, and religion. They change with changing times, creating shifts, and are capable of uh, galvanizing paths of reforms. They are often color coded, but uh, when when a segment of society shows sign or signs of uh, insecurity towards a rising ideology, it appears uh, to 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 threaten them with its its, its mere presence. Not knowing that a mere act of erasure reaffirms the strength of it. This erasure uh, and attempt to de deconstruct its origin, its foundational structure in intentionally uh, juxta juxta juxtaposed is often motivated uh, with, with benefits. Here I uh, enact the politics of color through the act of erasure. <clears throat> My next work is a, a, a performance. I have to go back to the PDF. And uh, the title of that work is Human in Una. Uh, it, is, it is a performance. My performances are often complex commentaries on the society marked by symbolic use of material either found or, or made and at times heightened by a representation of a color. My realities arrive from real experiences, reading the writing of Ambedkar uh, and uh, the Dalit movement and its philosophy. I have to again play the video of that performance then uh, while I'm talking, you will get an idea about that performance. <clears throat> My performances happen uh, also in, in the villages of India as acts of defiance in solidarity with Dalit manifestation that are akin to the Black Lives Matter, where uh, Dalits have come together and protested the lynching of Dalit youth and rapes that are common in rural India. Human in Una uh, performance is, is, is response to Dalit lynching and uh, is uh, identified as a critical work. I, I confront the suppressions of Dalit lived realities emerging from collective histories through current times as an extreme, uh, extreme form of uh, sporadic lynching. Shocked by uh, the inhuman assault featured seamlessly across television channels, the episode uh, 
the episode which occurred in 2016 near Pune, Gujarat. I responded through my uh, resolute performance, questioning the caste codes and understanding the the humanism. <clears throat> the the participatory performance heightened through symbolic materials makes one realize fragment of losing social consciousness, surpassing rational boundaries of uh, of civility. Uh, symbolism of materials uh, such as wooden stick, a tool uh, which represents protection, can also be a potential threat. The black suit symbolizes the dark isolation of uh, Dalits within the society, engulfed by a greed of power. And uh, the, the suit also symbolizes uh, uh, humiliation the Dalits face in various forms of operation. The gutri uh, on my back symbolizes the burdens of the caste and class system. The episodes which occurred on 11th July 2016 in Mota Samadhiya village near Una, Gujarat, cow uh, 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 vigilant accused seven members of the Dalit family for killing the cow. They were screening a, a carcass. They failed to convince and uh, four of them were brought to Una in a car uh, to be stripped and assaulted in, 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 in public. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's move to the next work. I think, I hope you got uh, the idea about the performance. So I stop the video and go back to the PDF. Yeah, the next work is, uh, is, is a sculpture. The title of that work is Broken Foot. The idea of division is the same as illusion. It exists. But no one talks about it as reality. The, the discrimination creates a line and the line promotes social imbalance. Here, uh, the cracked foot uh, symbolizes the reality of caste discrimination in our society. And with this broken foot, no one stands united as a society. A force uh, which built homes, offices, bridges, and uh, cities, as we know and imagine, a uh, force that uh, uh, raises the economy of the nation, a force that uh, builds, builds nation. The, the constitution unfolds as a live text, uh, as millions of feet march thousands of miles homewards. What, uh, what were the conditions which made them uh, take a arduous journey on foot? Till the time their feet developed cracks like cracked earth. These are broken people of the times, broken from their homes. Can uh, one stand united as a society on, 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 on a broken foot? Uh, in the context of inequality, we can't progress as a nation with a broken foot, a divide called discrimination, as uh, the pandemic starkly reveals it. So uh, I will uh, move on my curation, curatorial projects. Uh, yeah, the, the next uh, the project I want to share with you is the working practices. When your visual history is less understood and your, your social history misunderstood, you collaborate with others uh, from your community, something that then can be described as curating. Within the curation, I, I delve into social realities as an expanded political subject. Let's start with the, with the few selected projects to discuss here. Working practices. Uh, this, is, uh, this show took place in, in the showroom London in 2018, curated by me and Clark House Initiative with works by 25 artists. During May 2018, Clark House uh, Initiative was in the showroom bringing an approach to, an, uh, to, to art production and discourse that is based on uh, com community uh, realism and uh, rootedness within the specific uh, urban context of Mumbai and, uh, and, and, and informal uh, sociality that is uh, at the heart of uh, their working practices. In the exhibition, uh, the exhibition had, had, had grown out of a dialogue between the artists and curators that touches uh, on undercurrents of caste, 
class and blackness within the uh, artist practices drawing on the connection between the uh, british black arts movement and indian contemporary art in particular uh, the exhibition features a number of artists whose practice uh, concerns dalit politics <clears throat> the next project i want to show uh, you before uh, that i i forgot to uh, share some of the selected uh, slides from the show so these uh, this is by uh, producer sunani and uh, yeah producer sunani and hanadin ken from africa this is social housing by amol patil and the below image is in search of dignity by sudharak olwe here is dalit panther vachnale uh, mentara bhatkal and sujna sridhar yeah this two works by jitin lal nr yeah the next project i'm going to share with you is revolution and counter revolution <clears throat> in august 2019 i facilitated a large format national residency workshop looking at conceptual art in relation to ambedkarite philosophy where i assembled 50 like minded uh, artist at the world heritage site of ajanta caves and uh, it was also uh, to celebrate its second centenary year of discovery uh, 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 that workshop organized by secular art movement the workshop was based on the book revolution and counter revolution in ancient india written by dr ambedkar buddha assured a great revolution in ancient india about which dr ambedkar said buddhism was uh, was was uh, as great a revolution as the french revolution he even stated the history of india is nothing but the history of a moral conflict between buddhism and brahmanism there have been revolutions and counter revolutions elsewhere in in, in the world too the prominent ones being uh, the french revolution and the russian revolution the two revolutions were followed by counter revolutions Uh, uh, uh with art and literature playing vital roles roles in in both in modern india uh, the constitution uh, assured in a revolution by scrapping the tenets of manasmriti dr ambedkar also led another great revolution by negating exploitative religious system and accepting the order of dhamma very few of those uh, find it uh, tyrannical express themselves against it through spoken or uh, or a written word songs or paintings yeah this is another image of uh, poster of that workshop inviting artist yeah the next project is broken foot unfolding inequalities this is my recent project during the lockdown Broken Foot Unfolding Inequalities is, is, is Artist United Collective's first online curatorial exhibition project as a fundraiser. The artists collectively raise a voice uh, through forms of voices of dissent as uh, projections of subject representing as well as interrelating the context of labor and nation. Some artists especially address the <clears throat> unfolding inequalities uh, locating the existential migrant labor crisis as a rupture as an ongoing as well as a historic trajectory of forms uh, of inequalities as the pandemic unfolds the societal inequalities of of uh, the times uh, be it social as political or environmental uh, and and so on uh we are uh, looking at uh, protected ignorance a blind eye towards uh, forms of uh, societal uh, defunct uh, we are part of the question arises at this stage uh, as, as the world is subjected to a pandemic can can we reboot or uh, form rational forms of sustainable uh, livelihoods professor vai saloni tells us in his essay cars like narratives if the objective of rationality is to kill ignorance then it becomes a uh, writer's rationality and if it is the opposite it uh, signifies an uh, unwriter's rationality and consequently a protected ignorance <clears throat> 
together uh, this project is a broad framework which uh, uh, which 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 brings uh, various subjectives uh, facets uh, through visual representation each participatory artist works were uh, integral uh, uh, contributions towards building a context towards a dual framework of labor and nation and its interrelated context of uh, context which are outlined in in the curate curator's note as we address the crisis as an existential one uh, we realize the importance of documentation of of the times subjecting the public welfare systems as per the constitutional provisions and the directive principles uh, invoking dr ambedkar as a symbolic representation of the constitution and uh, and and uh, equality and uh, his uh, integral involvement in constituting the labor laws yeah uh, well uh, <clears throat> uh, the work and programming i have done uh, requires more time to explain in detail but uh, as the organizer told us to show work in in a given time frame so with due respect i would conclude my presentation here and once again i thank you all for listening me so patiently thank you thank you very much thank you so much prabhakar and uh, there's lots to to discuss here and so we are looking forward to having that chance uh, once we've uh, also heard from professor vyas alone uh, so uh, and i think uh, people will want to hear a lot more about these uh, curatorial practices and what you've uh, and the exhibitions that you've put together but as well your own art practice uh, so we'll come back to that but in the meantime may i uh invite professor wise alone to follow and uh, um speak to us uh, about uh, his presentation today which is titled alternative or difference and then we'll all collect back together again yeah uh thank you thank you anupama uh, thanks for an invite thanks for hosting this event uh, and i i hope my ppt is visible on the screen uh well uh, it's an alternative or difference that's a kind of a reading with the what how you propose to uh, to make a make an intervention uh, as far as aesthetic sensibilities or the consciousness goes so there are i i begin with this uh, with this uh, uh, important quote uh, which uh, uh, which it says uh, this is a this is a well known speech by dr ambedkar on 25th november 1949 in constituent assembly on 26th january 1950 we are going to enter into a life of contradictions in politics we will have equality and in social and economic life we will <clears throat> have inequality in politics we will be recognizing the principles of one man one vote and one vote and uh, uh, and and one vote one value in our social and economic life we shall be we shall by reason of our social and economic structure continue to deny the principle of one man one value it's a very important loaded statement dr ambedkar made way back in 1949 and we are yet to resolve those uh, uh, those uh, those contradictions now coming to some of the important points there is a meta narrative of modernity as brahmanical modernity is extremely pro problematic the ways in which modernity gets analyzed and understood in the indian context and at the same time how it gets advocated in the colonial times and also in the post colonial times now next important question which one has to engage with is the public sphere in india which is governed by the gandhian syndrome of modernity and the brahmanic syndrome of sacred and divine and that's why that's why vikas damulkar makes this important uh, uh, makes an important observation that if you want to change the public sphere in india it cannot be changed without changing the private sphere so how the personalized private space first needs to be changed consequently your public sphere will get changed so that's a very important statement observation uh, uh, um, uh, dr dr zambulkar has dr vikas zambulkar has has made and this 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 intervention comes from a very ambedkarite thinking and this ambedkarite thinking really questions the very basis of the knowledge production process in india so so one has to see representation as politics of conscious choice and aesthetics because 
the 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 body of work which the present day artists are using or are producing you need to see their consciousness which is so much embedded in their own politics but at the same time their consciousness towards certain kind of understanding or their consciousness to 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 challenge or interrogate the meta narratives of modernity in india and also the brahmanical modernity and the so called even the questioning the the the, the whole rubric of uh, the so called liberal and secular so <clears throat> now it is it is very important that we 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 need to understand these kind of representations as opposition to the hegemonic public sphere because the public sphere as i said so much of gandhi syndrome so much of the brahmanical syndrome of sacred and divine and therefore you need to understand as to how this hegemonic public sphere is constantly getting opposed these kind of representation now consciousness as a key to evolving nature or exploratory nature of pictorial signifies where normative or presupposition becomes a process to be interrogated now this process one has to understand while 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 studying the uh, uh, visual production uh, uh, in in a country like india then caste gender hegemony as category of interrogation that consequently goes in dismantling protected ignorance so so you you need to understand as to the purpose of the objectives of this 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 representations is all about dismantling your presuppositions dismantling your protected ignorance and then i i come to this particular term as ambedkarite and ambedkarian can we define the both can 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 one really see the art production based on this or even for that matter i would like to submit that politics in india is ambedkar and anti ambedkar i'm not talking about the political parties ambedkar represents the transformation whereas anti ambedkar is the status quo and then you can see how the politics gets gets governed so so this there is this ambedkarite one so ambedkarite are the one who have been followers of ambedkar but there are also people from other section of the society which are we are are even from the religious group who have developed ambedkarian thinking and that ambedkarian thinking is all about questioning the the very notions of consciousness and these kind of meta narratives and make critique of the Uh, of the present through their uh, visual signifier so so their visual world is so much moved by these kind of aesthetic considerations now the 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 important uh, uh, aspect of all this interrogation is is there a post colonial imagination this is a very very important question which one has to think every time people talk about post colonial and what is that post colonial at least i have failed to understand and i don't see any kind of a discourse going forward irrespective of the fact that there is a enough critic of the colonial but there is no there is no critic of a self the the people who are engaged in the knowledge production process or people who are involved in writings with this kind of post colonial imagination they have not been able to produce a critic of a self that is one thing second they have not been able to produce the critic of the brahmanical traditions third is that they have not been able to produce the critic of a divine and sacred these are important questions and one also has to see likes of uh, uh, um, there, 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 there is one there, there is one author who, who who calls that you know writings of ambedkar or the ladhi literature as as mythograph just imagine the kind of a tone they 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 use and how dubious it is so therefore this whole rubric of post colonial becomes extremely problematic and to me it is more to do with maintaining their own hegemonic practices rather than dismantling of the self and dismantling of those hegemonic practices so there is this perpetuation of a self and brahmanic i continue to exercise anarchy and psychotic caste perversions because they are the one who are the beneficiaries of anarchy now who creates anarchy why anarchy is being maintained one has to find out those answers then is creative field free from prejudices 
this is a very important point which one has to one has to take as to when we talk about whole idea of creativity as a very imaginative very 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 autonomous self and all those things but is it free from prejudices that's a question which one has to pose and that is why one has to see the cultural productions what kind of a cultural productions are being made then articulation of space be connected to the power of articulations and not mere space for articulation so these are the very this is a very fundamental question in which one has to make and these and these 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 image productions are 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 good example and also the literary products are a very good example of this text now the second the the, the, the important is pedagogic questions in art institutions the ways in which dr ambedkar gets sidelined say for example uh, in 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 politics they do discuss because he has been part of the constitution movement but how much like when you talk about the political the, the indian political thinkers but the 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 institutional pedagogy pedag 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 would like to uh, uh, project gandhi as a uh, political thinker but would not like to teach ambedkar as a political thinker it's very simple or even for that matter fully as a political thinker so one has to see the politics behind this and at the same time in 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 in, in many many uh, 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 subjects this this kind of a this kind of a practice is still being continued in the academic syllabuses now when it comes to the art institutions you know ambedkar never gets discussed in art institutions that's a very funny thing I, and though we talk about the 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 whole idea of equality and freedom and 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 uh, 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 expression as, as as your fundamental right but but you you need to see how who has advocated those things but moreover let me recall you know when in uh, way back in 19 uh, uh, 1980 uh, 80 uh, 86 86 yeah if i'm not wrong uh, way back in 1986 uh, 86 or 87 if uh, i think it was 87 uh, when when uh, department of art history and aesthetics baroda had organized a seminar on ajanta and while de delivering a keynote speak uh, uh, keynote address M N Deshpande, who was the ex-director general of Archaeological Survey of India, had talked about Ambedkar. It's very interesting that why he would talk about Ambedkar in the context of the Buddhist caves, and the audience there was shell shocked. The only person who did not who who did not get shocked was me, Professor Deepak Kannal, Dr. Manisha Patil, and Professor A P Jamkhetkar. We we I mean, barring us, everybody got shell shocked by when he uttered the name of Ambedkar. and it took so much time even for baroda art history to talk about caste to talk about ambedkar discuss about ambedkar in the pedagogic structure so till 2002 when a series of seminars were organized by professor shivji panikar at baroda the 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 issue of caste get started getting discussed in art historical practices and the art historical pedagogy pedagogies so these are very important uh, pivotal Uh, uh moments which i thought i should i should also bring to the notice of the audience so so there is this whole whole thing started with savi savarkar and uh, most celebrated painter uh and uh, uh he he painted untouchability he was the first one to pictorialize the uh, the, the caste and uh, also this is this is a fantastic painting he created about the chaturvarna and the lower state of the society going towards buddhism that's a that that so so and then he also <coughs> uh, you have then statue of manu so our claims to modernity forget about post modernity is very dubious claim because the statue of manu gets installed in the 21st century imagine in india and that too in a judicial complex so and and even the highest court of india does not take a sumoto action against this and make a uh, and 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 and, and uh, deliver a judgment that this should be removed from the court premises that is how the hegemonic thinking goes in every sphere of uh, of of indian uh, uh, thinking and 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 even the social practices so so you have then series of manu produced by savarkar and who went on dismantling the manu attacking manu like anything then you have a wonderful installation by 
Shukla Savan, one Pandita Ramabai, because Pandita Ramabai is very interesting to see the legacy of critiquing Manu in, in, uh, in, in, in the state of Maharashtra. It was started by, by Mahatma Phule and Savitri Bai Phule. And there are a lot of poems against Manu written by both. And then you have Pandita Ramabai who made a who wrote a critique of Manu Smriti during that time. And this is a fantastic uh, installation Shukla Savant has made where she used Arthi as a pictorial signifier and the photography, photograph and, 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 and all those uh, uh, the images she pasted on photograph and how the, the last rituals become so, so much closed entity when it comes to a female body. So, so there are there is a lot of meaning in, into this these kind of installation works. And it is a uh, it, it, it is I, I, I find this installation as a, one of the very important marker in the field of installation art in India because it, it hits you to think socially as to and that is why I said it is it is it is to do with your Ambedkarian thinking. And and, and, and that is how these images gets 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 produced. So she was so, and then you have so I'm 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 not sharing the old images, but the new images of Jay Nanda Kumar and where he put Manusmuti on the head and and how the the judiciary like some of those judgments which have been written in recent past uh, uh, by the judiciary, uh, the High Court judiciary. It's uh, uh, it's 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 a phenomenal. Uh, it's it's an example to to see as to how your hegemonic thinking and the idea of sacred and divine does not go out of your head or even out of in, in your writing practices or even while delivering a judgment. So this is a this is this is what uh, the, the 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 judicial turmoil that uh, that happened and also uh, uh, Nanda Kumar has been involved in many protests and uh, uh, including this uh, uh, the, the protest against the farmers at his own hometown in Aurangabad or even earlier the protest against the atrocities which he was also part of a uh, part of secular art movement and, and, and so on. Then we have this Rajeshri Gudi who has engaged herself in dismantling Manu through a very different means. Now this is this looks like an abstract work, but it is a paper pulp which is used and constructed as a rough surface. And that, that paper pulp is that of the text of the Manu Smriti. And you have recent example, which she did in, uh, 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 in, in, uh, in Delhi uh, as a part of that larger exhibition where Prabhakar Kamade had uh, also had his, uh, as his installation. And there, uh, this is all the paper pulp, and and there is a small dot here, which 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 says it is Manusmuti. So, uh, quite an interesting one. And then she uh, comes from Pune, and uh, uh, she saw her uh, uh, her mother and uh, uh, the, the the environment there in Pune, and and that 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 she she became part and parcel of the Ambedkarite uh, upbringing of the. Uh, 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 of the family and and uh, uh, created the, so her sensibility is always directed to make these kind of interventions in order to present a critique of the society. Then we have a very good example. Uh, this is from Lokesh Kurke, uh, which he did long back in 2008 and uh, 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 a very good painting. So it has it has a lot of components of narrative. Actually, this raised leg is that of the uh, Trivikrama, then here you have the Varaha, then here you have the Kachapa, and this is all inspired by writings of Mahatma Phule when, when he writes Gulam Giri especially. Uh, so, and, and how the Brahminical tradition, the Brahminical household also tries to maintain these kind of a mythic tradition and the hegemonic thinking in the Brahminical household. And, constantly they are protected. So you have different, different, this, these are the niches where the avatars are there and the avatars are taken out as and when the, 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 the Brahmanical thinking requires. So, uh, so there is this critique of a self, which is very important to understand. Then we have Jaya Daronde, who has, uh, uh, who has been painting and this painting is titled as My Past. 
where she is unable to relate with the people around her and then she recalls as to how things have been moving in the in in the life of a uh, uh, life of a uh, of a scheduled class girl and uh, the the kind of experiences of of uh, of the relationship which people face and also the, uh, the 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 psychological trauma which which uh, which is faced by the by the community then we have this rambali prajapati a very uh, he he is from uttar pradesh he studied in varanasi and stays in ghaziabad and uh, made this particular installation where you have the steps and 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 the the like the education becomes so important and but at the same time the purpose of the education is also to dismantle your presupposition so so uh, and then we have uh, this this artwork by another installation by 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 rambali prajapati uh, this is this is how the sacred books are constantly guarded by the brahmanical household by the brahmanical thinking and somehow they don't wish to unpack the sacred thread rather they wish to maintain the sacred thread constantly around this textual textual tradition then we have this malvika raj very very important uh, another young painter from uh, from bihar and she has she uses the uh, uh the uh, uh, the uh, madhubani uh, uh, painting uh, technique of, uh, of 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 a particular society and makes a very different kind of a set of images and uh, like ambedkar's head blossoming with with knowledge you know parliament the social democracy the constitution uh, the the buddhist ethos and 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 the, the the ethos of secularism the ethos of equality there are number of things all these figures they really really try to uh, 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 she she tries to incorporate and and then there is there there are number of symbolic things in this particular painting say for example the reserve bank of india because it was ambedkar ambedkar's research responsible for the for establishment of the reserve bank of uh, india so so there is this constant revisiting the history and making that as a part of your pictorial signifier in order to change the public imagination and then this is this is the work again in watercolor very very important like how the 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 dead the dead cows or the dead buffaloes are being taken away by the untouchable community the practice which is still there in some of some it's still in many parts of the uh, of, of village india then <clears throat> Uh, avinash chande who made a fan- who, who had a fantastic exhibition which was curated by prabhakar divakar uh, divakar uh, uh, and and that this exhibition was curated in uh, as a, in, in clark house so this is round table conference uh, quite an interesting thing as to how the artists are constantly revisiting this issue of round table conference and uh, uh, making making paintings around this round table conference uh, in a recent time there is a fantastic book by dr rashikar wundru on the making of uh, india's uh, uh, constitutional democracy or electoral these things uh, uh, the but uh, the uh, ambedkar gandhi and patel that's a fantastic book and when you read this particular book you come to know as to how this whole aspect of representation was achieved but at the same time the opposition how it went on even in the constituent assembly so so that is a that's a very important important book to understand this this particular images and then you have avinash chande making this parliament as a symbolic uh, uh, painting and and today we don't know whether this this will remain or not or under the new project whether there will be a new constitution because quite possible that 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 the present present political thinking can uh, can can go to uh, can go to any extent then we have this sanju son pipre the fantastic painter very creative and makes use of different different uh, events now you have this whole uh, attack of with, with this cow vigilantes and and how the cow politics gets governed in the uh, uh, in 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 the indian political sphere and then 
the uh, the, the the nature of the killings that that happens so the so the cow becomes very important and the human becomes less important and that's the most inhuman thinking that's how the priorities are being made and the the brahmanical thinking or the left liberals the the, the so called left liberals they never venture into making in, in in presenting the critique of all those all those all those practices then this is rising which is a, a, a very uh, important work as to how all these all these protest in india have been there and how ambedkar becomes part and parcel of this uh, of of the the image of ambedkar becomes part and parcel of all the all the all the democratic protest in india that's very very important to see as to how the image of ambedkar is being used and so far the the image of ambedkar was hardly touched upon or anybody taking name of ambedkar was was seen with lot of uh, with with lot of different eye and then this is the most important painting he produced that is you know on on just on the on the on the newspaper you create this fantastic work as to how there is there are aspirations involved from this institutional the the the, the constitutional democracy and and very interesting thing you know at 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 here you have the uh, maharashtra assembly here you have a delhi so 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 you have delhi and bombay and he is based in mumbai so he seeing those things very differently and making making these kind of uh, uh, images whereas prakash gaikwad uh, has been involved in making different different themes and and this 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 particular work is beauty and ugly it's all about the 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 uh, the Brahm, the brahma varna and the shweta varna so so this this whole varna politics gets Uh, uh gets delineated through this kind of vision which we just then we have pinak bani he's a fantastic uh, graphic painter and he has produced uh, he studied in baroda he is from he's from uh, west bengal and uh, 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 there are there are so many things so gandhi in the center represents the trading community in india the economy and uh, and 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 uh, uh, trade are controlled by this community whereas capital as such has been exclusively monopoly of the families that are belonging to the trading community the image is constructed in a drawing room and the main figure reads economic and political weekly that is epw a magazine run by the marxist party but shows a completely pseudo pseudo attitude so so this is a this is a fantastic critique you know like the the, the bengal was so much governed by, uh, by by the by the by the so called communist party but the caste remains in bengal the poverty remains in bengal and so many practices remain in bengal then this is the most very 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 attacking kind of a very 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 different kind of a visual so you have organic intellectual by pinak banik so in the household of a brahmin so the child is reading gramshi and that too upside down whereas the father is holding the image of marx and tilak and 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 uh, uh, wearing the janoins so 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 one can one can see the the uh, uh, how the, the 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 brahmanical mind in india uh, which is and 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 hold the 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 the, the left liberal so called left liberal mind in india are using gramshi but at the same marx and gramshi but at the same time they don't want to come out of tilak that's a very interesting thing and that's why i i always made this this statement that if the left liberals and so called intellectuals in india can write book on marx and gandhi they can as well produce a book on golwarkar and marx so if such book comes i will not be uh, surprised to such to such uh, to such uh, publications so this is by vishnu he is a kerala based painter and then he depicts how the uh, the, the the scheduled caste uh, people are uh, being used as a part of your foot soldier so he is carrying that 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 flag of hindutva everywhere and then he is not supposed to speak he is not supposed to raise his hand he is not supposed to do anything so his hands are nailed from at, at the back that's the that the this is the second painting he uh, he shows and then you have painting by baiju another young painter from kerala very very critical very very vocal and he sees as to how state is has become an instrument in supporting anarchies in the society 
rather than dismantling anarchies and provide constitutional justice the state is perpetuating violence and this is what his paintings are all all about many of his works are very volatile and very different way of constructing the images the crowded images and using certain symbols and the and the and the and the governmentality which which is uh, which is generally we we see in the public sphere then there is this young boy naresh suna another important painter very promising painter who has made uh, uh, was very much part of the rohit vemula movement in uh, uh, in 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 hyderabad and had done many many of those paintings on atrocities and the performances and uh, uh, many many other uh, media many other artworks he 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 produced and uh, how this uh, the, the, there is always this violence and that that violence creates so much of dismantling of everything including that of the human body so 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 at time the human bodies are cut into pieces and one can one can see and 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 these days the videos are circulated like it is it is something like a great thing and that is where even the communities which are on the street in india have been part and parcel of the followers of untouchability so they need to reposition themselves now as to whether they are going to be part and parcel of this hegemonic brahmanical practices or they wish to be part of the constitutional democracy and make their conscious choice accordingly amul patil's work has been greatly discussed beautifully by by prabhakar and so i won't delve into uh, in, into his work but in a recent time i must say there was a very good small uh, exhibition curated by rumi on mahar satyagraha and she found, she considered that as a uh, the, the, because the first human right movement it was mahar satyagraha in the uh, in the in in this democratic uh, sorry in this modern uh, um, uh, period of india and 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 uh, uh, you you have to see the all the agitations afterwards so so mahar satyagraha becomes very important and very pivotal then there is this samyak prajapati who studied in nid in uh, in uh, in andabad and made these important works so he used this medieval tradition akbari paintings and and there it is showing like vruddha yuddha ki ghoshana karte that that vruddha yuddha that is rudda the elders are the one who declare war and and the youngs they go and and fight and get killed so that's a very very important one as to how the the communalism the hatred being practiced in india and getting perpetuated and you do have the symbol of 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 the political outfits here so very volatile then this is another graphic which he created like there is so much of commotion but our prime minister has preferred to put the headphone uh, around his uh, around his ears and wish to maintain a studied silence and and this is what is even happening and people really have to think about their own choices because they are the one who have made those choices and those choices you need to question you also need to come out of out of your this kind of choices then this is ranjita kumari she produce a fantastic work around the preamble of the constitution this is just one particular Uh, this things as to how the, the 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 preamble of the constitution the very spirit of the constitution is getting killed and how pivotal it is for in the life of the indians so all his all her images are are centered around the um, uh, this this preamble of the constitution and also the other aspect of the indian constitution so so all her works are very much very much inspired by that ambedkarian thinking so so very uh, uh, potently get uh, involved very very uh, uh, ha have a very powerful uh, communication skill and and using the text and also the figure all along and 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 showing it to the public to to make them realize as to how they they wish to be or whether they wish to make this country as a real constitutional democracy democratic country or the the are are they wish to be part of the republic of citizen of government of india who have, who wish who do not or who would not like to come out of their money then this is mayuri chari who has done a very good work on savitri bai phule savitri bai phule was the most important figure in uh, uh, in, in in maharashtra and 
see there are in in maharashtra you have produced fantastic figures uh, 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 phule and uh, uh, mahatma phule then we have uh, savitri bai phule you have doc- we have dr ambedkar so these are the people who are always exported outside maharashtra and ambedkar is the only figure who is exported out of india i would say so you have one has to see the 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 the, the very very essence of this of, of this kind of figures and who refre- who represent social change who represent true secularism who represent the the uh, the uh, the inclusive character of the indian society and completely away from this whole gandhian secularism so this gandhian those people who other to gandhian secularism to me they are the most dubious they don't want to see critically what gandhi has done in his life and his ideas and how he stick to some of those some of those stupid things and uh, and and then this these kind of works they open up different possibilities of using inscriptions using poetry using threads using everything and create these kind of artworks you know in recent times there were there are some research twitter artists i don't know how how should i call them whether i should call them whatsapp whatsapp researchers or or twitter artists research researchers so one of the researcher the great uh, 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 had tweeted that uh that 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 uh, 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 that that that, uh, that that muslim lady who was with uh, with mahatma phule fatima fatima sheik uh, is a concocted kind of an idea i mean these people have not read the letters of savitri bai phule they have not read the Im- they have not even bothered to see the images which are there and uh, they they make this kind of a nonsense as to how this is a concocted kind of an idea that muslim dalit or a muslim shudra unity it was very much part of the full project and that was what is what was happening they they don't see all those things and they make all kinds of statement on twitterati and and they 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 are very much part of the ivy league universities that's a very shameful thing and then we have vikram bhise Uh, uh who has worked extensively on labor and 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 the role of dr ambedkar uh, in 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 labor uh, uh, welfare so all the labor welfares which are there exist in india were all initiated by dr ambedkar the leftist have not done anything as far as labor welfare is concerned it was exclusive contribution of dr ambedkar and they have no right to claim that they are the ones who have really initiated any kind of a welfare measures that's a very sad thing and the history doesn't talk about all those things in modern india so the the, the historical narratives which are being created in india is all about protected ignorance and not dismantling your ignorances at all here we have the the labor coming and and cleaning the the statue of or, or garlanding the statue of ambedkar the the it it took so much of time to make those labor laws to create those kind of conditions and in one go of of corona condition this government completely killed all those labor laws so so imagine the kind of an anarchy which is being perpetuated from the ruling dispensation then you have this sunil netragaukar who is a who lives uh, in a small town but uh, has been involved in making posters has been involved in making billboards or the walls of the zilla parishad schools and everything and there he he goes and paints he is simply an atd trained trained person but is engaging himself in presenting the critique the pictorial critique of the present day society then we have this sajan mani who has most promising one and a fantastic painter uh, artist from kerala very young painter who comes from the uh, family of family of rubber uh, tappers and uh, who uh, making a statement and and showing that ecological uh, uh, issues uh, and the caste uh, politics of space that is that is that exist in the communist kerala i mean Uh, the communist party in kerala ruled for a very long time it is still existing in in uh, uh, in in kerala but how much they have done in order to kill this or or to to uh, to, to address those 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 volatile issues or the structural problems which are existing in the society and uh, uh, he uses he uses his own the black dalit body 
and makes this these drawings and then make these kind of uh, so so all his works have been very phenomenal and 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 there is there is this constant engagement that goes through through his work so the statements which he is creating is is like 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 challenging the very essence of your thinking and also very essence of your pictoriality you know generally you think that okay it has to be good it has to be this it has to be that but that is these are not the concerns for sajan sajan is using his own dalit body to articulate his own voice and his own space and his own interventions and how the society is still sticking to those things and how there is this oppression that goes and the ecological problems which the the the, the region of kerala faces and let me also tell you how the, the when it comes to farming and the farm land how the untouchables are pushed to to the margins even even in the uh, in the, in the kerala society which claims to be most literate society in the in, in the country and then you have the uh, uh, you, uh, you you have this this kind of a work which 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 completely uh, gets departed and then making these this inscriptional kind of writings all over as a part of your ongoing struggle so it is it is it is constant i mean it is in flux it is it is not a static one and then you have mansoor he is a sculptor based in in baroda and has been producing this kind of chair so you can see how that 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 politics of 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 an animal becomes part and parcel of of your of your political power of your political chair most very creative and then uh he has been engaged with lot of lot of political happenings all around the country and also produced many many images uh which were uh, which 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 the, the 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 kind of a violence he faced uh, uh, um he himself and also his own community during the uh, during the riots and all those things gets pictorialized by uh, by by bansu in a very different way in a very different kind of a language then you have riyas komu juxtaposing gandhi ambedkar now this becomes a never ending debate in india now the 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 but but yes there is an ambedkarian thinking what hap- what happens is that it is so difficult for indians to dislodge gandhi but it is also very difficult for indians to adopt ambedkar now the 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 cosmetic nature of ambedkar the the the, the adoption of or the acceptance of ambedkar at a cosmetic level and the acceptance of ambedkar at a real intellectual level are, are are two different things and this is a very very beautiful image like fine in colonial india you have gandhi which is very important and then gradually the the image of ambedkar emerges because ambedkar is future gandhi is all about return to antiquity it's all about antique past whereas ambedkar is a future he is the one who is going to lead you he is the one who is going to tell you all about the rationality all about the equality all about the fraternity all about the liberty so and and ambedkar makes it very clearly like he he was the one who presented the critique of the french revolution and also russian revolution and also makes it very clear that i have not learned that fraternity from the french revolution for him fraternity comes without compassion you cannot have fraternity and that compassion is very much part of the buddhist logic buddhist principle so that is why he says that i learned those things from my master buddha and not from the french revolution and this is a very very important like there is this shift from gandhi to ambedkar and this yeah i i i quickly go bring things to a close so we have some yeah, sure 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 thank sure. you sure then you have uh, this these are the images of uh, krishna priya again uh, produced around ambedkar and thinking then this is performance by kaushal who is in jamia milia islamia and uh, makes a thread around him and and then makes perform but this is the most interesting one like resident of sector 13 chandigarh and and nobody wanted to buy this this particular t-shirt because there is there, there is no sector 13 in chandigarh you know it is all to do with your 13 as a inauspicious number and that is how the number doesn't exist in chandigarh then we have priyadarshini ahor Uh, who comes from a uh, dalit family and 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 working now somewhere in in himachal 
and makes a very good performance so all her performance videos are available uh, you can see then we have sunil aucher uh, another important painter in maharashtra and you can see how people migrated even in the tank during the during the covid time then you have biren yadav who is like all that anguta shaf series he made and then this is by ranjit singh uh, now now he he oscillates between gandhi and 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 the and the non gandhi non gandhi kind of a things but his labor things now i come to uh, sudharak always exhibition which was curated in sa by by me and it was arranged by dr suryanandini it was a retrospect exhibition where he he uh, his all all his works were uh, were shown and then this is a uh, uh, atrocity uh, series which which he produced then this is a, a covid one and then we have uh, abhijit guzar who went on the prisoner rehabilitation in in kolhapur and then this is aparna a uh, fantastic example of people banging thalis and thalis and all kinds of things which was directed by 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 our prime minister and one can see how even the educated ones are doing these kind of practices are believing in this kind of thing so so it hardly matters whether you live in in which area or which which house then this is randut rindit madoke uh, who has documented the atrocities in uh, in punjab and uh, the most agrarian restate how it produced the violence when the dalits really make protest and then last this is arun vijay a very important uh, photographer in in chennai very young one who produced who photographed the mortuary and the the kind of a things that go in in mortuary and these are all the post mortem photographs uh, where, where the the work the job has to be done by the by the doctor but the job is being done by the untouchable and they are forced to do do do, do this do these jobs and then finally i come to this very beautiful posters created by the bapsa group in uh, uh, in uh, in jnu so save karl marx and then here you have rosa is a rosa is a rosa until i sign as a vai brahmanai sir thank you very much um thank you so much um for this i i think there's so much here in terms of what you've shown us and 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 what we've been able to kind of see in terms of new art practices and emerging art practices so it's going to be a little hard to um sort of come back and and really uh, because we have some limited time to really take on all the questions on the table but i'd like to invite prabhakar to come back as well and and it seems as if uh, with with uh, with both what you presented professor alone and and uh, what prabhakar was uh, speaking about in terms of his art practice um there seem to be sort of two arcs there's the book and then there's the body and both of these seem to be freighted and i'm thinking about the visuals that we saw as well that both of these are freighted with enormous significance right these are the sites where there is defacement there is deconstruction there is degradation that's happening but also a kind of remaking and so the 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 kind of materiality in a sense of the book and the body is perhaps also complemented in some sense by uh the question of the future and being haunted by the past right so we're haunted by the past so manu haunts the past the cow haunts the past the figurations of gender haunts the past gandhi in some ways becomes a certain a uh, very interesting uh, kind of you know agon both historical and political and that extraordinary you know kind of transformation of uh, gandhi ambedkar with with the riyas kumo and then we've got the future and those kind of extraordinary renditions of of uh, you know ambedkar the constitution mahard the rtc uh the critique you know what you ended with with bapsa but also uh, i think it's binak patil's critique of uh, marx and hinduism um so the ways in which you know ambedkar becomes this this really insurgent figure and even sort of seeing and imagining and sort of being with him thinking with him uh puts us into that space of what you call a kind of ambedkarian rethinking 
So it's just, I'm just struck by, by um, some of, you know, just sort of immediate responses to what, uh, what I saw, but I wanted to use this as an occasion to ask both of you a couple of questions and both of you can take them on as you wish. I'd like to focus a little bit on the art practice aspect of what both of you have been speaking to. There are many questions about politics mm -hmm. and so on, and I think we can wait on that wanted to ask about questions related to um, art history, art historical practice, and so on. The first is for Prabhakar, and there's uh, an attendee uh, who asks, why did you use black as the color? And I think this is the, uh, the Una installation. Why did you use black as the color to represent discrimination? Isn't that ironical when we use black and white binary to represent injustice done against Dalits? And then there is another question, and I have a lot of questions about the Ajanta, um, about the Ajanta caves for both of you too. But I'll I'll wait. But this comes from from your discussion, I think, of uh, the the centenary. Uh, again, what is Kamblay's rationale to compare the French Revolution with the Ambedkarite Revolution? Might also take us to Mahad and those figurations of Mahad. Uh, and then two questions for Professor Alone. One is. Um, this I think is very interesting. Do you think that Dalit aesthetics is an open-ended or a foreclosed academic domain? And how do you relate it with larger ideas concerning modernism? Uh, and this is something that has come up again. There's another question also about Dalit identity. What's your take on the Indian courts, trying to put the Dalit term out of official use and so on. But this question of Dalit aesthetics, I think is very, very interesting. And then there's another, uh, uh, there's another question uh, that asks, I'd like to request Dr. Aloni to expand upon the idea of articulation of space in relation to the power of articulation. And this, I think, is something also for Prabhakar um, in terms of rethinking or remaking the power or rethinking the power of signification as a kind of power of articulation. And I was very struck, uh, Prabhakar, by uh, the, the, the mechanical model of defacement. And I think there's something quite extraordinary in what you're trying to do there. First, the miniaturization. The second is the repetition and the recursivity of the image and what it is confronted by. Uh, the fact that it is inanimate somehow seems to make it more powerful. But anyway, these are broad questions for both of you, I think, about aesthetic practice, Dalit aesthetics, and then the space of, uh, of artistic engagement, however you wish to take those on. Prabhakar first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I come to that. Uh, the first question uh, was asked about the black color. I, as someone said that I used uh, the black color as a color of operation or, or, or discrimination. But uh, I would say I haven't used the black as the color of, uh, uh, as color to present uh, discrimination. I use black color to condemn the uh, uh, episode or incident took place uh, uh, in the Una, Gujarat, uh, under the name of uh, Gaumata and uh, saving the cows. So uh, it was uh, my attempt to, uh, to protest against uh, uh, such atrocities. And uh, when uh, the thing comes to the black, uh, 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 there, there are many angles uh, towards the black in Indian society, in, in, in Indian context, historical context and political context and cultural uh, context as well. The black, when it comes to the God, it, it, uh, it is acceptable. And when it comes to the person, it is, uh, 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 it is not acceptable. So in both way, uh, we live with this uh, truth and ex ex uh, this truth exists with us. So I just wanted to condemn the incident. Uh, that's why I used uh, the black and uh, I, that's why I called people and get engaged uh, and uh, uh, take this black to put uh, on me as an object. So they will go back with this black uh, uh, applying with their own hand as well. So that is not about the uh, to present discrimination with the, the color of black. 
it is not uh, about uh, about it coming to the next question about the uh, revolution uh, the french revolution and uh, and my uh, views on that uh, on that uh, question i uh, already uh, stated uh, uh, about the uh, i already stated during the presentation about the french revolution and the buddhism uh, in in my uh, Uh, presentation but uh, particularly i want to say about uh, uh, indian academics uh, in art school when i when we talked about uh, french revolution and uh, artist contribution in the Revol- french revolution uh, we celebrate in the in the in the academics during our uh, art education but when uh, the thing comes to the Uh, uh, Buddhism or the uh, artist contribution in uh, in, in, in the uh, revolution in Ambedkar movement <clears throat> or the Buddhist movement, then uh, our education system does not allow us to speak or even utter a single word about the about that revolution which took place around us with us. So it is not. Uh, Uh, it is not a uh, practical thing or logic thing to uh, discuss only about the french revolution uh, and not even uttering a single word about buddhism and the amit amitkar revolution in the indian history which uh, which uh, 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 without shedding a drop of blood who uh, liberated uh, millions of people so that is my view point uh, Uh, on the revolution, French Revolution and Ambedkar, Ambedkar's revolution in 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 Indian context. Yeah, thank you. Can I add in as well? There are uh, Prabhakar and for Professor Aluna as well. There's a there are two other questions that I think might be important or interesting for each of you to think about. Uh, and they're connected. One is uh, again, I'm looking at the chats uh, rather than the Q and A. There's a question to you, Prabhakar. We are curating at a time when the figure of the curator has been glamorized, is part of the commodified market system involved in the act of selection and omission. How do you subvert this? So it's a selection and omission in order to maintain the Brahminical merit system. It says. So how do you subvert this? And maybe asking you also to speak to your work with the Clark House Initiative. Uh, Professor Alone has also curated, and so for both of you, that question of again the power to resignify or rearticulate, and in that context mm-hmm. as well, and kind of institutional question uh, from Deepa Chard. What do you think are the currently available institutional spaces within art history? as a domain for the use of caste as a category of analysis and this again i think could be thrown open to both of you prabhakar what you were saying about your own training but also the curatorial work that you've been doing but i think this question of kind of institutional <clears throat> visibility legibility um that i'd just like to throw open to both of you and then we can also come back this way to professor alone as well yeah uh i would start with the clark house first Uh, I did my uh, debut solo in 2016 in Jangri Art Gallery, and uh, uh, <clears throat> at the same time, I was invited by Clark House uh, to be part of uh, a group show. And uh, at the same time, I was invited by the the Clark House as uh, to be a, a curator and artist in the space. Uh, when I was studied, I mean, uh, there are lots of people. there were lots of people who were working on the lit politics and the lit aesthetics and a bit right uh, views on visual practices but uh, nobody was uh, uh, looking at them uh, as a, as a prax- uh, promising and practicing artists in the established art world in indian scene but uh, we uh, have started uh, looking uh, at this seriously and taking into the main places such as rat house and uh, 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 many places exhibition places as rural india and the uh, and the mainstream places as well uh, talking about the selection of artists uh, like we have many people who are working on the the con- concerns and context of uh, uh, atrocities and discrimination uh, uh but uh, i think uh, as i spoke while explaining about the 
Brahminical academics uh, does not allow us to represent them in the spaces. Like uh, Mr. Lune will speak uh, 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 more uh, in detail about the incident which took place in Nehru Art Gallery uh, about the Nandukumar Jogdans exhibition. Uh, one of the artworks uh, was there displayed uh, in that show, uh, which was about the Gandhi and uh, Pune Pact. But uh, as, as a group of people came to a gallery and they shut it uh, down and they closed the show. And that kind of incident happens and took place when uh, uh, the people uh, or Dalit artists started to uh, express themselves through their practice in the mainstream art world. So many of us, many of them uh, uh, still uh, are, are uh, worried about uh, uh, to present these kind of, uh, or to produce these kind of uh, uh, practices uh, and to show them in the mainstream art world. So uh, we took uh, a challenge to do the same. Uh, and we started doing this kind of, uh, of exhibitions, practices, discussions, and uh, discussing the discourse. So people coming forward and uh, 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 and joining us. So the the solidarity between us among us has been uh, uh, started to uh, started to creep in, and uh, I think this is the uh, positive sign for. Uh, the people who are thinking uh, to fight against this discriminatory system, the anti-caste movement, and uh, uh, talking about democracy and constitutional values. Uh, so uh, institutional uh, contribution is important to creating these kind of alternative uh, uh, practices and alternative groups, like we run a secular art movement from 2018 and uh, the revolution and counter-revolution workshop was a part of that secular uh, movement's programming, secular art movement's programming. So from the uh, national level, we invited 50 like-minded artists to participate in that uh, workshop. So it kind of uh, academic uh, uh, attempt as well, in a bold move in the art world as well. So uh, simultaneously, we are uh, taking uh, steps to collect people who are talking um, uh, talking about Ambedkarite ideology uh, uh, through their uh, visual practice. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, I hope in, in, in coming future, in near future, there will be more spaces, places like Clark House and uh, more people will come together worldwide, worldwide to, <clears throat> to defeat the, the discrimination and to fight against such kind of uh, morbidity. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Professor Alune. And we're going to try to save some of the questions. That's what I'm trying to do, because we have a number of questions that are <laughs> reflecting on many of the things that both of you have raised. And if we can't get to them, we'll at least try to save them and get them across to you. But please, uh, Professor Alune. Yeah. So going by one by one. Uh, as far as this whole issue of uh, Dalit aesthetics and this is folklore kind of a things, uh, you know, the the let, let me also tell you something. You know, the word Dalit becomes a very problematic things, and there are there are people who have been opposing to. It. But let me tell you that even that word was also used by Dr. Ambedkar. And if you see the photographs which are available, of like the Scheduled Caste Federation has been translated as Dalit Federation. And, and, and those photographs are easily available. So that itself is an evidence. To say that Ambedkar did not use the word Dalit after that, what uh, Gandhi and Dutchables have done to the untouchables, uh, what Gandhi and Congress have done to the untouchables is also wrong because it makes it very clear that they are synonyms. And, and in order to not to get confused with multiple terminologies, I'm using this rubric of scheduled car. So that's a very, very important explanation. Having said that, you know, the, the ways in which life narratives are for that matter, the ways in which, I mean, how do you understand that? You know, it is all about the perception of others. It's not the perception of unscheduled caste, it's a perception of others. The non-scheduled caste communities, how they perceive a, Dalit, the, a scheduled caste community. It's very simple. 
then at the same time you know my 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 friend dr umakant made a fabulous distinction he says there are four kinds of dalits one is the is, is a ambedkarite who wants to make a transformation in the society second is the son in law of the government whose whose only aim is to just attach caste certificate and get a job and third he says is a harijan who lives on the mercy of others like what gandhi created harijan and the fourth he says bhadwa that is bootlicker who li- who who literally is a bootlicker for i mean he licks boot for every and and makes his living that is a kind of a categorization he did he proposed that categorization long ago and one has to see which really body of of those those four categories you wish to be part that is one thing and then second you wish to be conceived as that is that is a that that, that, that is the most important phenomenon i have been using uh, rather i i, I refrain the word dalit aesthetics because i don't see i i see lot of problems in it and and i resolved those uh, those, uh, those those comments for a time being uh, because it it requires hell lot of uh, i mean you have to explain each and everything and this is not possible at, at this particular juncture but i have been using the term ambedkarite aesthetics or ambedkarian aesthetics why why say so see the 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 ways in which people have been inspired by dr ambedkar and his movement and made those cultural production whether it is songs whether it is painting whether it is popular imagery or anything for that matter and it is that phenomena is not confined to one particular set of community now to say that dalit is a homogeneous category is also very wrong it encompasses so many things and at the same time you have lot of people who are joining the this kind of a thinking they wish to part of the transformation and that is why i have i am using this term ambedkarite and ambedkarian thinking or the consciousness and the aesthetics productions centered around those those ideas and that is why i call it as ambedkarite or ambedkarian aesthetics it's very simple it cannot be categorized as you know brahmanical or nehruvian or the or, or the gandhian kind of a things the gandhi syndrome has been very much there all the celebrated painters painted gandhi like anything i mean everybody wants to paint gandhi bapu 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 that's it and that bapu, you don't want to see how that bapu really function and how how that bapu was criminal minded in order to perpetuate the social order of the of the, of the brahmanical structural sims uh, thinking and he was the one who advocated the uh, hindu india it's very simple he has been a foundational uh, leader for creating hindu india and, and 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 for that matter you have the example of photographic example where he raised hands for the partition of india now imagine these are these are very important things and we have this visual evidences and 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 irrespective that 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 bapu becomes very important i mean i don't i fail to understand this even to an extent one of the person who wrote or contributed an essay he writes that you know his seminal emission as something blissful aesthetic thinking sleeping with the naked girls that is how things are 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 are, are uh, you know um, elogized so so you have to think as to what kind of a thinking one one really has and then the, the 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 very exploring of the multiplicities the very exploring of the alternatives the very exploration of presenting a critique of a society is very much part and parcel of the ambedkarite thinking ambedkarian thinking and you don't have any other uh, other figure in india who has that kind of a, a range and and thinking take people along and make country as a, as a as a good country make democracy as a good democracy you know it's it's very simple when in bbc interview dr ambedkar says yes the the blacks went and praised this particular person as far as abolition of the slavery was concerned you see which name they take which which name dr ambedkar takes so and 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 it's very 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 sad that the the gandhi gets nurtured by the so called secularist brahmanical thinking and at the same time it is getting patronized by the europe and america and people in europe and america they have been nurturing gandhi like anything they are the one who are in a perennial protected ignorance syndrome 
we are not in a we don't wish to be part of that perennial protected ignorer syndrome they wish to be part of the perennial protected ignorer syndrome it is their choice it is their consciousness their their consciousness is guiding them so therefore the the the, the very use of these life narratives and making a, a, a different aesthetic interventions become very important now the, the 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 power of language is very enormous whether it is literary or whether it is visual now in the visual world it is not one set of a language it is a multiple set of language and that multiple set of language is being used today i find what is global global is all about the materiality of material but here are the set of painters who are defying that logic no we don't want to be you know that's just the materiality of material but our materiality of material is rooted in our thinking practices and how we are going to be different and it is this cultural difference it is this alternatives that make them different that is this thing and then the the uh, articulation of space and the power of articulation are really different two things you know okay fine everybody is there so so i give you space i give you stage you come and join that 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 is what the space of articulation we are willing to offer you space of articulation but we are not willing to offer you power of articulation there this is difference you see likes of likes of sharma great art, great historian the most celebrated historian when he writes who were shudras the sorry uh, the shudras in ancient india just read what he writes about ambedkar the tendency which is observed in the lower caste masses of india in the recent time that is what he says see the kind of a mindset he has that means i mean irrespective of the fact that what conclusions he proposes the same conclusions was made by ambedkar and he, despite agreeing all those things so 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 one can understand that is just one example another example is devjani ganguly i mean imagine calling ambedkar's writing as mythogra it is a trash it is nonsense it is a it is a pure brahmanical puranic uh, pur puranic way of writing and therefore i i i, I get bugged by this whole post colonial kind of rubric it is so problematic caste was existing in 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 pre colonial india caste was existing in colonial india and caste is existing in, in post colonial india where is that where is that you know and 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 then caste is a colonial product that is also another it is i call it Mara, in marathi i call it as a davai show i i uh, one, one can very very well understand the potential potent, potential uh, of, of this particular term and then and that is why i say you know the power of articulation becomes very important that just not the space for articulation because unless until you acquire that power of articulation the discourse will not change the criticality will not come in india all the criticality is through fuko through derida and all kinds of things you know but let me tell you you know fuko talks about power and knowledge khule also made the power of knowledge this thing, much before fuko and gives a fantastic examples that is just but but that does not mean that i should reject fuko at the same time if you are talking about derida if he saying that signifiers are the Uh, uh like uh, there, there is no fixity in in the meaning of the signifier and all those things but but it all depends on the subjective position you have to make this kind of a criticality and tell people no there is a way of thinking in order to interrogate this kind of discourses and what devjani ganguly did is is all trash that is that is the most ridiculous thing she made i mean ambedkar's writing as mythogra the dalit life narratives as mythogra and then the institutions space is concerned Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm going to uh, interrupt because we have two questions that I just want to pose, and then uh, allow you to sort of come back and then give Prabhakar a chance. Because let me let me let me respond to uh, uh, Madhita's question. Just take uh, as far as the institutional legacy is concerned, yes, I I gave this example of what happened in the uh, in the in the art history of India, uh, how it it started. and uh, there is a there is a space why why there is no space for example i mean uh, as it is artistry is taught very at, at a very few places in india but yes we can say that in jnu we do teach all those things it's not only me lot of my other colleagues also also, also teach about all those things and we are very much engaged uh, in 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 uh, making the discourse very critical it's not just confined to visual arts but also to uh, this thing but but as far as the uh, practice is concerned yes we have example of baroda and uh, uh, aud 
uh, which are a, a very good liberal space where these kind of things are being discussed and and people are free to to get engaged with these kind of discussions and and produce their artworks let me let me this is we we've got about 5 minutes at the most we're at about 11:43 here and in fact we have another meeting that both sara and i have to go to right after this but there's an important uh, there are two i think connected final questions that i wanted to pose to both of you and we'll bring uh, our session to an end uh, we've tried to save the extensive both sort of commentary the applause uh just the the sheer kind of appreciation for what both of you have presented today in our chat so we're going to try to send that across to you we can't do justice to the number of questions and comments we've got here but i want both of you to be able to see it but there are two i think related questions one comes from uh, bika zambulkar and this is to prabhakar but i think open to both of you in the process of articulation <clears throat> or translation of the medium of the language of pictorial art what's lost as untranslated and what gets amplified the position is in the context is in context to the images of oppression only gets amplified without the oppressor and the missing element of dalit or ambedkarite agency so i take this as a kind of critical question but also what do we do without the other in some sense in these um, in these uh, representations the other question comes from suraj jengde and it comes from the slightly different side uh, the other side of this a question to professor alone how would you analyze the idea of the self in which she invites the brahmanic or anti ambedkarian castes to offer critique of self is it meant to represent personal and social or does it also have to do with sex love and other sensorial fecundities can dalits also self reflect and then the question to prabhakar enriched by the profoundly intellectual art curve of the community would you happen to know what kinds of art forms are practiced by the dalit community and how many artists might be out there any guesstimate at all so these are sort of final words for both of you please take just a couple of minutes to respond and then uh, we'll uh, thank you both immensely and uh, and then thank our audience uh, and bring this to a close so prabhakar do you want to do you want to respond and then we'll end with professor alone yeah i'll i'll go for the second question that how many artists are there who are practicing the lit art and the, their languages there are so many artists in the previous generation as well like uh, as uh, alone sir presented us uh, and uh, he uh, discussed about the savi savarkar and uh, so many artists were there in the last generation like uh, in maharashtra we have prakash bise we have we have many like pramod babu ramtekar from nagpur and uh, uh, we have many masters painters as well but we need to talk about those who uh, have discussed the idea of uh, ambedkarite politics and the idea of dalit uh, uh, politics uh in context of the assertion against the uh, against the uh, uh, biased and discriminatory system but uh, i think uh, in in the whole world uh, now the people are coming together and connecting uh, to each other like sajan mani in the in 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 the abroad like uh i mean uh, it's quite difficult to uh, uh, uh to uh, mention everyone like rashi gudi is there in pune as alone sir mentioned earlier in in his uh, presentation uh, uh, these are the names from my generation uh, like slight uh, 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 the previously sanju son pimpre is there who has been part of the contemporary art world and most celebrated artist in indian scenario uh, these are the people Uh, like for an example we have invited 50 artists for ajanta uh, in my recent project i have invited 60 artists uh, uh, national level for the online show called broken foot and also we are trying to uh, mingle with uh, uh, ambedkarite intellectuals mm-hmm. like gautam putra kamble and uh, scholar like vaisaloni and many other people are there from india and abroad as well so it is kind of a great start to create uh, alternate practice visual practice visual culture and uh, the ambedkarite discourse in the visual culture 
like uh, I can call it academic in uh, institution, institutional contribution uh, while practicing secular art movement uh, through the secular art movement and many other uh, 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 contemporary similar groups who are practicing this discourse uh, very powerful and strongly. So people can uh, find many artists, many Ambedkarite artists uh, through our curatorial projects, through our uh, uh, programming, through our discussions and many uh, various art uh, initiative and activities. So yeah, and uh, nowadays we are quite, uh, uh, it's quite easy to access all this information through the internet, uh, through the Google Access and many other platforms out there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, just one by one, very brief, briefly, the, the image of an oppressor and the image of the oppressed one, you know, it, it becomes a choice for the, for the artist. I being trained as a painter, I did my graduation in painting. I would not like to impose or curb artist liberty. They have every right to choose what they want to do. Having said that, my job is to see how their pictorial signifiers get evolved. And so it's going to be their choice, what they want to show. Then coming to Suraj questions, uh, well, you have to understand self without becoming a non-self. You cannot understand self and without becoming a self, you cannot understand the non-self. Both are codependent, both are interdependent. And in order to understand that kind of a nuances of the mind consciousness, you need to have a different parameters of understanding, but at the same time, you have to delegitimize yourself. That power to de delegitimize yourself is an enormous one, is the most challenging one. It cannot, it cannot be obtained by the writings of Foucault or Derrida, let me to tell you very clearly. Okay, or even by adhering to the sanctioned ignorance. So you have to kill your own ignorances and do the things. As far as the you have enormous writers in Maharashtra who have produced the critique of a self their politicality, their social behavior, through the poetries and many other things. Or even for that matter, there is an evolving of the term called DB. Earlier, it used to be said as Dalit Bandhu, but today it is being said as Dalit Brahmin. So, so there is a critical self that is saying so much exists in the, in, in, in the, in the Maharashtrian Ambedkarite communities. And at the same time, that criticism is not lamenting. It's not about if suppose you do not get any personal favor, that is why you lament the society. That is not the case. And that has never been a case when it comes to writing a constructive critique. It exists in the society. It is very much there. People don't want to read it. That is their problem. People don't want to understand it. That is their problem. All their ideas are so much centered around the self. It is through the prism of self you are trying to see, you are trying to construct that critique. And then lastly, I would like to respond to what Professor Mahalakshmi has raised, this pertinent question, how does critique find space in Ambedkarite aesthetics? Yes, there is a, there is a, there is a critique which is, which is evolving, which needs to be, which, which needs to be uh, uh, analyzed, uh, analyzed properly. And, and this is just one example I, I, I tell you. In 1936, Baba Sahib writes, that nothing is permanent, everything is changing. In 1955, he writes, nothing is permanent, everything is changing, being is becoming. So, so there is this constant influx and that constant influx is not from the, I mean, just imagine today being, becoming, you are trying to understand through the analysis of the loose, but it is very much there, it exists. But what kind of a philosophical tool you would like to advocate and therefore, I always say that like the, 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 I, the conception of the Swalakshana, which gets elucidated by the text, like in a text like Nyaya Bindu by Dharmakirti, is so potential, so enormous, where you can really make the critical analysis of all those phenomena that is happening around. Thank you. Thank you both very much. There's a there's a, a an elaborated conversation also on chat. I don't think we'll be able to get to it, but 
uh, questions of the body, but emerging from that representations of uh, masculinity, where is the space for gender and gendered representation uh, in some of these art practices, yeah. questions about sexual purity, the anxieties around gender. Uh, so there's a set of questions there. I don't know if you want to take a minute to respond to any of those, or we can start, or we can wait for another conversation. We'll be meeting again next week uh, and continuing with uh, some of this focus on, on Western India and Maharashtra somewhat by taking up the question of the Dalit Panthers and uh, literary insurgents. But I want to give both uh, Prabhakar and uh, Professor Aloni the final last words. So I'm going to thank you both enormously for both the generosity of your time, but what you've presented to us. Uh, what we've, uh, the conversation today will be available online shortly. And both Prabhakar and Professor Alone are available. They're easily searchable online. Uh, so we'll be in touch, I think, if you wanted to, to do so. But I want to extend a very, very hearty uh, thank you from, from our end for participating in this but I leave you both with the final words. Well, uh, uh, thank you, Anupama. And uh, uh, it's always an interesting thing to, to face those kind of volatile questions. And uh, uh, I don't separate gender as something different. I, I take it very much integrated part of the systemic oppression and the, the women's have been the most oppressed in the Indian social system, they be it is from this community or that community. But at the same time, the one has to see in the modern Indian sphere or in the institutional sphere, there is, there is this discriminatory attitude or the level of uh, the marginalization operates on a caste line. So, so that, that also one has to see I, how you really make those kind of preferential treatments when it comes to the gender. And at the same time, everybody has a right to equality and that, that right needs to be exercised very critically. And at the same time, with responsibilities. And those responsibilities are so enormous because your responsibilities in the academic sphere is not only to be very critical, but also to explore those alternatives and also make the thinking as a part of your, uh, uh, not only just the transformation process, but also empowering process to delegitimize the self. Thank you. Bhakar? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I would like to thank you again, Anupama and uh, Columbia University <laughs> for inviting uh, me for the presentation. And uh, yeah, uh, while uh, this, this, uh, discussing this discourse, we always, uh, we always uh, tell people that a bit right idea of expression or a bit right ideology or uh, uh, this discourse is always allows or gives uh, gives freedom to everyone or especially women to to think beyond the beauty uh, and to think beyond the the uh, the mainstream or Brahminical aesthetics and to go beyond uh, uh, to aesthetics which comes from the the which comes from the the uh, life and uh, the values of human humanitarian values. So it is more important to uh, uh, think about the values, humanitarian values, and uh, and the society where we live, and uh, uh, in and the uh, and the present time to think about while expressing. So I think it's quite. Uh, uh, I want to stop here at the positive end, and uh, 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 hoping uh, for the. Uh, great future of uh, this discourse and uh, hoping to expecting uh, uh, all of yours to contribute more in, in, in uh, uh, active participation in that uh, uh, discourse and uh, discussion. Thank you both very, very much. Thank you. Uh, and Jay Bhim to everyone and uh, hopefully we will see you next week uh, at, at the same time and same place.
बाय बाय जय भीम बाय